Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a little festive mini vlog for you guys because I am going to be doing some holiday things that I thought I would bring you along for. I am going to be decorating my reading room which I always film every year and I always have so much fun doing it and I also have a holiday party tomorrow that my sister and brother-in-law are hosting and they gave me the job to make my world famous peppermint bark. <laughs> It's not world famous, but it is very good, and I'm very excited to make that. So I thought that I would film my whole process of making the chocolate, because maybe that would be of interest, and it's just fun. And I do want to get some reading done, so I have been listening to Don Bien Son on audiobook while I got ready this morning and did some things around the house, and I also started A Christmas Carol last night. You guys saw I read it by the fireplace. It was so nice, and I want to read a little bit more of that today. Today is December 2nd, which I'm so excited excited about. I can't believe that Christmas is literally around the corner. And I did upload a video today about my December TBR and recommendations, so I'm probably going to be picking some books off of that list, so if you missed that, I will link it around. And I'm just so excited for the holiday season, and I love filming vlogs around this time of year, so that is what this video is for today. This video is also in collaboration with my absolute favorite jewelry brand, Ana Luisa, which is based in New York City. I am a New York girl, so I love the fact that they are based in New York City, and they are my favorite jewelry brand because they are sustainable, they care about the environment, and their pieces are absolutely gorgeous, and everyone there is so incredibly nice and kind, and they really care about the products that they are putting out and how it affects the environment. So. I have four pieces that they sent me that I get to show you guys today and I am beyond excited. When I was in Canada, a video went up where I showed you guys my first Ana Luisa pieces and my cousin watched that video or she saw my Instagram posts and she saw these earrings. I actually have them right here. I wear them all the time in my videos. They are called the Frida. I love that so much because they remind me of Frida Kahlo, but anyway, they are these beautiful hoops with a pearl and they are in gold, but my cousin saw these and she got them in silver and she wore them for her engagement party and she used my code and everything and she was like, thanks Carolyn, because I used your code and I got your exact earrings in silver. So I highly recommend this to my family and so obviously I recommend it to you guys as well. They always have such amazing deals and amazing prices and they really are just all around an incredible brand. I am very picky with sponsorships and collaborations. I don't do them all the time because I really want to do them for brands that I really care about and I care so much about Annalisa and I just love everything that they stand for. Before I show you the actual pieces, I just want to show you how they sent them because I feel like you can really see how much care they put into everything. On the inside, it just has your pieces in these adorable little cases which have magnetic clasps. So they're amazing for just keeping your jewelry safe and even for traveling. I love these and they're made so, so well. So we have three of the teal ones and then a smaller orange one because this a ring came in. Also on the inside, it says something good for the earth. We had a dream making jewelry that doesn't come at earth's expense and it happened thanks to you. Breathe easy, we're carbon neutral. So when purchasing from them, you can feel at ease because you know how much they care about their effect on the environment. And I just think that that is so great for a brand. And anyway, now let's get to the pieces. I'm going to put the names on the screen because I don't remember the exact names. The first piece that I want to show you guys is this gorgeous gold chain. I think that it is so delicate and beautiful. And that's really the kind of vibe that I always go for with jewelry. Just something that looks elegant but doesn't stand out too much. That's kind of what I usually go for. And gold. I really love gold jewelry. They also have beautiful silver jewelry as well, but I am more of a gold girl rather than a silver girl. Um, but that's obviously up to you. So I love this so much. It's just so delicate and goes with everything. You can wear it every day, but you can also dress outfits up. Then the next one is this ring, which I will show you a little bit closer up. 
So it looks like this. It is this really beautiful thin gold band with some gems in it that kind of look like stars. And if you guys know me, you know how much I love stars. I like when I can wear something and I don't really feel like I'm wearing it. It doesn't really get in the way at all. And that is exactly how this ring feels. So I love that. And it's just very, again, it's just very me. It's so delicate and dainty, but elegant and beautiful and it doesn't stand out too much, but it makes a, a little statement. I don't know. That's just what goes through my head when I think about jewelry and the kind of jewelry that I prefer. So I absolutely love this ring. Another thing that I love about it is that all of their jewelry wears really well. I usually take the necklaces and I'll probably take the ring off. I don't really want to shower with the ring or the necklaces, but I can tell you that I have showered with my hoops from my last collaboration with them and they haven't tarnished or turned or anything. Um, and they haven't irritated my ears, which my ears tend to be sensitive, so just something to keep in mind. Then the next pieces that I want to show you guys are the earrings. I got another pair of hoops with a little dangle because they are one of my favorite kinds of earrings. I think that they are just so beautiful, perfect for every day, but you can also dress them up and make them a little bit more fancy depending on what you're wearing. But they are a gold hoop, again, with little gems dangling from them. The next ones that I got... Can you guess what they are? If you said gold hoop with a dangle, you are correct. <laughs> How gorgeous are these? Oh my goodness. So again, we have another gold hoop, but these ones have like a little orange amber gem to them. I love the color. I feel like it's so autumnal, but it can also be quite summery as well. And I feel like they could really go with a lot of outfits. I usually tend to wear neutrals anyway, so adding a little pop of color, I think, in your jewelry pieces is really fun. I'm just gonna put them back in the adorable little bags. I love these so much. What I'm the most excited about is that I have become a VIP member with Ana Luisa, so that just means that I am in a long-term partnership of collaborations with them, which I could not be more thrilled about. And I feel incredibly lucky that I'm able to make this part of my channel because you guys know I've talked about it a little bit. I love fashion. I went to a fashion school for fashion design until I switched my major to illustration. I've always loved fashion and beauty, and you can kind of share your personality through jewelry and fashion and makeup and the books that you read really tell a lot about your personality as well and so I love that even though my channel is mainly about books and my passion for illustration and reading, I love that I'm able to also share my other passions as well and to have a place to share that passion. So I'm so excited to be a long-term collaborator with them because I care so much about my effect on the environment, especially in a world where fast fashion has a very bad effect on the environment, and it's so important that what we contribute to the planet is to benefit it and to not harm it in any way, and the fact that Ana Luisa makes that their number one priority is amazing, and I just am so thrilled to be working with them, as I've said about a trillion times. <laughs> So I am going to be leaving a link in the description box for you guys to check out Ana Luisa. As you can tell, I cannot recommend them enough, especially because it's the holiday season if you want to get yourself a gift or someone else a gift. Like I said, my cousin even used my code to get herself a pair of earrings, so if you want to gift yourself or someone else, then I cannot recommend checking out their pieces enough. They are really so beautiful and just all around a fantastic brand, so definitely check out that link in the description box. I cannot recommend them enough, obviously. <laughs> for the trillionth time. So without further delay, me and my beautiful new pieces of jewelry <laughs> are going to start decorating my reading room, but it is 1.43 p.m. and this is usually the time that I actually do my workout. So I am going to get changed, do my workout, and then we're going to decorate and make some chocolate. I think that's my plan. And I'll probably do I listen to my audiobook while I work out or do I listen to music? I think I might listen to music, but we will reconvene with the vlog and the audiobook listening and the decorating and the chocolate making after my workout. I just, I'm very regimented and I like going by my everyday schedule and this is usually the time that I do that, so I'm going to stick with it. I am a creature of habit, so let's go work out. <laughs> I just set them all out on my vanity and they all look so beautiful together. I'm just having a little fangirl moment. <laughs> I'm 
Okay, it is now 3.40 p.m. I worked out, I had a little post-workout snack, and then I got a very exciting package in the mail. It's the prints for my Etsy restock. I am so excited. I did design some holiday cards for the holiday season, and I wanna have my Etsy restock as soon as possible. It is December 2nd. I wanted to have the restock at the beginning of December, but I ordered these a little bit late and then they had to get printed and mailed to me. But I'm really excited to show you guys them, so I thought I would show you them really quickly. So I did a little book stack that kind of looks like a Christmas tree. I did it in watercolor, so that's what it looks like. I also filmed a reel so that you guys can see my whole process, so I can put that in the video at some point. But I'm so happy with how this came out. So this was for one of the holiday cards, and I was very excited to see how it would turn out, and it turned out really great. I'm just so happy. It says, have your shelf a Merry Little Christmas, because I am hilarious, because <laughs> I love puns. Um, and then the inside is blank, and then on the back we have the same picture, and it just says, Happy Reading, Caroline Marie. And then the next one I'm also super excited about because it is from one of my tattoo reels for Pride and Prejudice, and that is of Mr. Darcy. But I dressed him up in a Santa Claus hat because I thought that it would be funny. Um, so it says, have you been good this year? And then on the inside, it says, like Father Christmas, my good opinion once lost is lost forever, Mr. Darcy, because I thought that it was funny and it would relate it to Santa sort of. <laughs> and then the back is just the same thing. The little book stack with happy reading, Carolyn Marie. A few years ago, I made a little hat, a little Santa hat for my Leo Tolstoy drawing that I always have on display on my wall. And everybody always says that Leo Tolstoy looks exactly like Santa Claus. And then I found this one photograph of him. I thought that it would be really funny if I drew the photograph, kind of like an author portrait in the author portrait style, but I made his hat red, I added a pom-pom, and I made him look like Santa Claus. <laughs> so it says Leo Tolstoy or Santa Claus. And then on the inside, it says, either way, happy holidays. <laughs> I think I'm funny. <laughs> I don't know if you guys agree. But anyway, and then the back, again, it's the same thing. It's the little book stack with happy reading, Carolyn Marie. So those are the three cards. They come with envelopes as well, which fit perfectly. So yes, we'll see how well these sell, and then I hope next year for the holiday season I'll start prepping a little bit sooner so that I have everything in before December, maybe even in November, and then I can have more options. But this is my first year doing something a bit more Christmassy, so we'll just see how it goes. Um, do kind of like a trial run. And then these are all restocked author portraits that I'm going to have available. And one of them is a new author portrait. It is the one of Alexander Dumas that I did that I showed in a recent vlog. I don't remember which one it is. Anyway, I wanted to have a bunch of authors available because I know some of you guys miss out because they sell out quite quite quickly, which is amazing and I'm so grateful, but I also want you guys to have the opportunity to get one maybe that you might have missed out on. And also, if you want to give them as gifts to people, that was my whole idea. So yes, we've got a lot of authors, three 
holiday cards and I'm just extremely excited. So that is what has happened since I last saw you guys. I got this in the mail. But now I am going to decorate a little bit. We do have family friends coming over tonight for a little birthday celebration for one of my family friends. So I do want to get some stuff done before that. I do have the holiday party tomorrow, so I do need to make the chocolates. I'm trying to figure out if I want this vlog to be just today or maybe a little bit of tomorrow. And I am feeling quite productive today, which is always good. And I always thrive for. Without further babbling on, I need to start doing things. So I have my big box of decorations here and we are just going to decorate the reading room. I'm going to listen to Christmas music or Dombey and Son or another Christmas book. I do have, I think, I think I just have to, at least for the first few minutes, listen to my Bing Crosby record because <laughs> I listen to it every year when I decorate. It has become a little tradition. So let's put Bing on and we'll start decorating. <laughs> Okay, I think these are all of the decorations that I'm going to be doing for now. I had so much fun putting up my decorations. I usually do the same thing that I do every year, but I feel like that's what I love doing and it's the joy of having traditions. Um, anyway, so I am going to get started on dinner, but I will see you guys tomorrow for some chocolate making. Hello everyone, so I thought I would come on here and do a little voiceover to tell you guys how I made these chocolates. So you just take any chocolate that you want and you get a pot, you fill a little bit with water and then you put a bowl over it, but you have to make sure that the bowl isn't touching the water. This is called a double boiler and it basically just heats up the chocolate chips through the steam of the water underneath the bowl. You could also heat up the chocolate in the microwave, which is a lot easier, but I don't know why, I just like doing it this way. And then once all the chocolate is heated up, you just put it on the pan and spread it out. I forgot to mention that I do line the pan with some parchment paper, and then once all the chocolate is on the parchment paper on the pan, I just give it a nice shake and then I put it in the fridge. While it cools in the fridge, I started making other chocolate and this one is for chocolate molds. And I actually decided to put some peppermint oil in there. I just filled up about a teaspoon. You can do a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on how pepperminty you would like it.
Once the peppermint is all mixed in, I then just started pouring the chocolate into the molds. This was my first time doing this and it was a little tricky at first but then I got the hang of it. My mom actually had these molds from years ago and they are just perfectly fine to still use. I of course washed them, made sure that they were clean, and it was just a really fun process. A bit messy if you decide to try this on your own. Just know that chocolate is going to get everywhere, but that's not really a problem. So now I'm just finishing up pouring the chocolate into the molds and then I started on the white chocolate part of the peppermint bark. So this is vegan white chocolate that I like using and again I did the same process of just heating it up with the double boiler. For the peppermint bark, I just put the peppermint oil in the white chocolate portion of the actual bark. Once that's all smooth, you want to pour it over the first part of the bark, which is just the semi-sweet or brown chocolate. Um, and this is just so satisfying. So it should just go on nice and smooth. The chocolates shouldn't mix. I usually let the first part of the chocolate, the brown portion, cool in the fridge for about 10-15 minutes. And then this is when both of them are cool and I just started turning it into the actual bark pieces. And just breaking it up. This was a way harder than it looks, maybe it looks hard, um, but then I actually decided to go in with a knife at the very end even though I just spent the whole time snapping it, so kind of silly on my part. That's the peppermint bark all done, and now I'm going to work on taking the chocolate out of the molds. This was so satisfying. I hope it's just as satisfying to watch as it was to actually do. I love how they turned out, and they were just so delicious. So I put the peppermint oil in the regular chocolate for these, so they did taste kind of like a York peppermint patty if you've ever had one of those. I was just so pleased with how they came out, and the Christmas trees especially are just so cute. The best part is that everyone really enjoyed them, so I take this as a success. Hello again everyone. It is December 8th. It is Thursday. Yes, it's Thursday. <laughs> and I have been crazy busy sitting here at my desk wrapping a bunch of Etsy orders. These are all of my author portraits. Um, you guys have blown me away. So I had my Etsy restock on Tuesday and your support is just mind-blowing. <laughs> Every time I have a, a restock, everything sells out so quickly. I still have some things up there, so if you missed it, there is still some things to choose from, but majority of the author portraits sold out, which just means the absolute world to me. My holiday cards um, sold, so there are some still left, but anyway, I'm just, I'm very grateful. I'm very happy. I have been insanely busy because I have evaded jury duty for the past few days, but they might call my number 
today at five o'clock, which is in a half an hour. And I have to see if I have to go in tomorrow. And I don't have a video for tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Usually I have a video going up. I was hoping this video would go up, but I am still <laughs> in the process of filming it. So that's not gonna happen. Um, things have just been a little busy for me, but exciting busy. I just wanna get all of these orders to you guys as soon as possible. If you want them before the holiday or around the holiday season, and I just want to make that my priority, so that's what I've been doing. And this vlog is going to go up hopefully, hopefully soon. I do have some reading updates, which I'm very excited to tell you about, which you did see. Um, and what else? I have just been a little frazzled the past few days because I've just been nose to the grindstone. Do you guys use that phrase? Nose to the grindstone, <laughs> trying to get all these orders wrapped. I've been doing about... 40 orders every day, which is a lot um, and I'm doing them a lot quicker than I feel like I normally do them Which is just fantastic. Anyway enough of me rambling. Do you care? Probably not <laughs> Okay, let's talk about books. So the first one is Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens I did get myself a physical copy round of applause for Carolyn Thank you I finally picked up my own physical copy of this I am on chapter, I think, 14. Yes, I'm on chapter 14, which is a decent way into the book. And the one thing that I have to ask Dickens, is all of this necessary? I feel like I love the core of the story where we're following this father and his son and his daughter, mainly the father and son, Dombey and son, Mr. Dombey, his son Paul, and his daughter Florence, and how he is kind of putting all of his hope and his business aspirations and his, his family name into his son and doesn't really care very much about his daughter. We're just following their journey and it's very episodical, of course, because we're following Dickens and he published this episodically. And I, I feel like this book feels like what the script of a sitcom like Friends or Gilmore Girls or any sitcom would be like. Like sometimes I'm thinking, is this necessary? But then at the same time, I'm also thinking it feels a lot like an episodical sitcom. Like we're just following along on the, this person's adventures for a little amount of time. And I just feel like it doesn't read like you sit down and you read one novel. This feels like you read this slowly, which was his intention. So that's just something that I'm battling with. I do love the core story. I just feel like it could be condensed a lot, but I know obviously Dickens was paid by the word and it was episodical, so that's not really something that I can complain about fully. Um, anyway, so I'm really enjoying it. The people are treating poor Paul so... not horribly, but they just keep calling him old-fashioned and weak and feeble and thin and small, and he's supposed to be this very fragile young child who we watch him grow up and just the things and the people that he meets and the things that happen to him. Uh, it's very Dickensian, which I love. I just feel so bad for Paul. It's like Oliver Twist and Nicholas Nickleby again. It's like you always have that main character that is going through serious struggles and the people in their lives just really aren't the greatest. Um, so anyway, that's my little update on Dombey and Son. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I know Emma is adoring it. Um, so I don't think I'm adoring it, but I'm enjoying it. So that's good. Something that I did adore was the Heartstopper Yearbook, which is such a wonderful, lovely little book. Oh my god, I'm, I love it so much. So basically, she describes it so perfectly on the back. It says, Welcome to the world of the best-selling Heartstopper series. This book brings Nick and Charlie's universe to life in full color and is packed with exclusive content from Alice Oseman. So we have, um, this is like a yearbook for the Heartstopper universe where we have extra art and we can see Alice's process and how her art and writing and the whole graphic novel developed through the years. It's just so wonderful and inspiring, especially as an illustrator myself. It also has a new Tara and Darcy mini comic, The Art of Heartstopper, insight into Alice's creative process, how to draw Nick and Charlie, and character profiles and trivia, which is just so cute. So if you love Heartstopper as much as I do, I cannot recommend you get the Heartstopper yearbook enough. There are 
minor, minor spoilers very minor loved it so great and then the next book that i read i read it every year it is an all-time favorite and that is the boy the mole the fox and the horse by charlie maxey this is my fourth year reading it now and it was just as beautiful and impactful and wonderful as ever it is just this extremely quotable book that I love how charlie maxey opens it so i thought maybe i would read you the opening so he says hello you started at the beginning, which is impressive. I usually start in the middle and never read introductions. It's surprising that I've made a book because I'm not good at reading them. The truth is I need pictures. They are like islands, places to get to in a sea of words, which I have always used that analogy uh, in my life. And then I remember reading that for the first time and thinking, I say that all the time. So I love that. Um, this book is for everyone, whether you are 80 or eight. I feel like I'm both sometimes. I love that because that's kind of how I feel about my writing and my illustrations as I want them to be for everyone, whether you are eight or 80. And I too feel like I am eight and 80 all at the same time. I'd like it to be one you can dip into anywhere, anytime. Start in the middle if you like. Scribble on it, crease the corners and leave it well thumbed. The drawings are mainly of a boy, a mole, a fox and a horse. I'll tell you a little bit about them, although I'm sure you'll see things here that I don't, so I'll be quick. The boy is lonely when the mole first surfaces. They spend time together gazing into the wild. I think the wild is a bit like life, frightening sometimes, but beautiful. In their wanderings, they meet the fox. It's never going to be easy meeting a fox if you are a mole. The boy is full of questions, the mole is greedy for cake, and the fox is mainly silent and wary because he's been hurt by life. The horse is the biggest thing they've ever encountered, and also the gentlest. They are all different, like us, and each have their own weaknesses. I can see myself in all four of them. Perhaps you can too. Their adventures happen in springtime, where one moment snow is falling, and the sun is shining the next, which is also a little bit like life. It can turn on a sixpence. I hope this book encourages you, perhaps, to live courageously, with more kindness for yourself and for others, and to ask for help when you need it, which is always a brave thing to do. When I was making this book, I often wondered, who on earth am I to be doing this? But as the horse says, the truth is everyone is winging it. So I say spread your wings and follow your dreams. This book is one of mine. I hope you enjoy it, and much love to you. Thank you, Charlie. I just think that's such a wonderful introduction and it's such a great way to introduce you to the story and it's full of the most gorgeous ink illustrations. I just, and he does some mixed media work. He's just so talented and I am the biggest fan and he's such an inspiration. And this book is one that you can read any time of year, but I always love reading it this time of year. So for the fourth time, I have given this book five stars because it is one of the most impactful books I've ever read. And if you have not read it, please do. It will take you no time at all to read. It is really quick and really impactful and just gorgeous. It's just a literal work of art. Um, so yes, those are my reading updates. Those are the first two books that I've actually read in December, surprisingly because I've been reading Neverwhere, but then my audiobook expired and I had to put it back on hold. And then I could read it physically, but I've been do so busy that I haven't been able to. And then I have been listening to Dombey and Son and I am reading A Christmas Carol, but I'm not done with that. But I'm loving it, it's amazing. It is my, I can't even remember how many times I've read A Christmas Carol now, but it is just, it's always so good. Every time I read it, it is just even more amazing. Um, so anyway, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and a huge, huge, huge thank you to Ana Luisa for collaborating with me on this video and I cannot recommend you check out the jewelry enough. Again, link in the description box. Their pieces are gorgeous. I am once again wearing them because I just adore them so much and yes, so. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it brought you some Christmas spirit, some reading encouragement, some coziness, some joy. I don't know. I hope you liked it. And I will see you soon in another one. Happy reading.